You are watching William Patterson University Television. Oh, welcome back to the desk. We're bringing the octagon to the desk for the first time ever as Justice Andrew and here's Jimmy. That's Jimmy Mc. That feels good. Patton <laughs> and Najee Davis. Uh, UFC 273 is this Saturday, and we have a stacked card. We have a big fight in the welterweight division. Number two, Gilbert Burns takes on undefeated number 12, ha Hamzat Chemaev. Justice, we'll start with you. I, I, I thought I was going to pronounce that you wrong. Got it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Who do you think is going to walk away with the victory? I'm going to be honest with you, Samori. I think Hamzat's taking this. He's 10 0, 4 0 in the UFC. He's finished all of his four fights in the UFC. Listen to the stat. In four fights, he's only been hit twice. Twice. Two times. Two times. That's insane. I mean, uh, so far, there's a reason why there's so much hype to this guy. He is an unbelievable fighter, and there's a reason why Gilbert Burns is such a big underdog. So I think Hamzad, I think he's, he's come away with the victory. Now, Jimmy, we heard a lot about Hamzad right there, but what about Gilbert Burns? And who do you think is going to win as well? No, I'm going to take Gilbert Burns. This guy's been hot so much lately. We're going to take a look at his last five fights in the UFC. This guy took out Tyron Woodley, absolutely embarrassed him, made him go to boxing and lose to Jake Paul. He beat Steven Thompson in his last fight. He's only lost to Kamaru Usman, but everyone loses to Kamaru Usman. Damian Maia, he beat in Gunnar Nelson. This guy's got great striking, great technical ability, great durability. The guy can last long in fights. I think he can match uh, Hamzat's wrestling better than most opponents. I don't see it being that easy for Hamzat this go around. That, that, that Tyrone Woodley W, though, it don't look so high any, anymore, bro, <laughs> after that Jake Paul loss, I'm be honest with you. Let's uh, keep it on this side, the shade side, I'll call it. Najee, who do you think is going to take, take the victory in this one? Just like Jimmy, I'm going with Burns. Like, like this, understand, Burns is a better boxer than, uh, is a better boxer, and he can, and like, like Jimmy say, he? he really is. How do we know, though? We've only seen four fights from Hamza Shemaev. We've seen four fights, but like, understand. His second to last fight, he knocked him out with one punch. Burns How do we know that Gilbert Burns, Burns is better than Burns is four and one in his last last five fights. And like I said, if it if it if it stays on his feet, I got I got all my faith in Burns. If it goes to the ground, then that's when it starts getting real shaky and stuff. But like I said, if he stays up, he got this. It's gonna be a knockout in the second round. Andrew. <laughs> I'm also going to go with Gilbert Burns, man. Okay. I mean, he's won seven of his last eight. I love the fact that he's a 400-point underdog right now. This, though, it's a lose-lose situation for him. You know, if he wins, he makes Kamayev look like a, a big hype train and, you know, that he exposes him. But if he loses, he loses to a guy that's never fought a ranked opponent. You know, Burns needs this win this, this weekend. He's a huge underdog. I think he's going to get it done, though. Oh, I almost have money on Burns. <laughs> I already know. Dude, I'm not going to lie. He's going to butcher his face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, McPatton. <laughs> Let's move on to the co-main event of this event. Aljamain Sterling will defend his bantamweight championship against the interim champion and the former bantamweight champion as well, Peter Yan. In their first fight, Yan lost with the disqualification. It was very questionable, and it's it's going to be a it's going to be a great fight. Uh, he's been talking a little spicy on this one, Andrew. So, who do you think's going to win this fight? I'm gonna go with Piotr Yan, man. I mean, he was on pace to win that last fight. He's you know he's a guy that gets better as his fights go on. You know, he's, he's one of the best all-around fighters. He's so consistent with his kicks his, and his punches. Um, I mean, he makes great reads, you know. Aljamain Sterling, he's great on the ground, but, you know, last fight we saw Jan, he was able to defend that almost every time. I think he's got a good chance this weekend. Awesome. Tagged him up in that last fight as well. Jimmy? You know, I'm going to take Jan. I think it's definitely a fight he would have won last time if it weren't for that illegal knee strike. Aljamain Sterling has got the reach advantage certainly over Jan, but if Jan gets up close, his technical precision, it's just unmatched against Aljamain Sterling. I like Jan to get his revenge. Justice? I'm going to go with Aljamain Sterling. He's been out for a long time, and I, un I don't really understand why people are hating on Aljo so much. P Piotr Jan was the one that got disqualified in his last fight, and he's the reason why Aljo is the champion. Now, he's, he's had a long layoff, but I think his game plan is going to be the wrestling, and even though he was losing that last fight, he stayed in there. He has an unbelievable gas tank. I think Aljo gets uh, the W by decision. Najee? Just like Justin, I'm going with Sterling. And, like, you can't, you can't blame a guy for getting knocked out DQ, like not, it's not his fault. He got kneed in the face while he on the ground. But like, like, um, like earlier, if he keep, if he stays to the ground and make it ground and pound and submit him, he has this fight. But it's gonna be hard fighting fight Yarn and close and fighting. But he can't stand up with Yarn, so he has to take it to the ground. And I feel like he watched a lot of the tape, and now he got a better game plan to, to take care of Yarn. Since you guys tied, I'll break it. I'm gonna go with Sterling because how spicy Yarn's been talking, he's been undermining him. And I think, I think um, Aljermaine wants to prove that he's actually a champion. So that's going to be very interesting. And speaking of champion, wow, Alexander Volkanovsky. A lot of people hated on him after he beat Max Holloway the second time. And a lot of people actually thought Max won that fight. I may have as well, but he's been great as a champion since then. And he's going to be going up against the Korean Zombie. So, Najee, do you think the Korean Zombie can dethrone Alexander the Great this Saturday? No. Oh, honestly, if you took a stack comparison, 
Volk is like 5'6 with a 7'1 reach advantage, while Zombie is 5'7 with a 7'2 reach advantage. But like I said, like for me, Volk is a better striker. So you can see by the strike by the seven strikes, Volk lead him by almost a, by 120, by 130, actually 130, maybe in fact. And the average takedown, Volk is better better takedown defender than Zombie. Like I said, if it stays on his feet, I feel like Volk could, could win the fight. But my only problem is Volk can't finish fights. In his last five fights, he came to decisions. And that's, the, that's my only problem with Volk. He can't knock Zombie. If he can't knock Zombie out, it's going to be a long day for him. Andrew? I mean, we've seen a lot of confidence from Zombie in this one. I mean, you know, he said, he came out, he said he's better than Volk in every area in, in the MMA. You know, he's feeling a lot more prepared for this fight. You know, we saw him lose to Jose Aldo in, tw in 2013. He said he was really nervous for that fight. He was very anxious. You know, he's coming back almost 10 years later. Volk, he's a unit, man. But, you know, I think the Korean Zombie, he's I think he's rugby. Yeah, think man. about that. He's played rugby. Yeah, that's he, crazy. That's a man's man. Yeah, no. Nah, I mean, I, I I like Volk, but I, I really think the Korean Zombie. He's got good odds in his favor this weekend. I like that, Jimmy. I'm gonna take Volkanovski. I like his ability to just grind down opponents, go for takedowns, really get up in your opponent's face, just grind and pound. You know, Najee you talked about he's not happy, like liking the fact he always goes to decisions. I think the longer this fight goes, the more it favors Volkanovski. Justice closes out for this one. Yeah, I think this is a closer fight than people think. I do think. I mean, if you saw the stats, this is a close fight. But I think that. You know, I used to be a vocator too, but you can't deny greatness. The man is undefeated in the UFC. He's beat Max Holloway twice, Jose Aldo, uh, Brian Ortega in his last fight. What I just, an amazing fight, by the way. Amazing fight of the year. But I, I just think that Volk is in another stratosphere. I think he's in the class of his own in this division, and I think he, he's going to come with the victory. Speaking of people in the class of their own, I think the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the UFC is the main man, the Nigerian nightmare, Kamaru Usman. And if we look at some of his stats, this man is amazing. He has a 76 reach. In the UFC and in MMA as whole, his record is 20 and 1. He's only lost once, and that was early in his career. His significant strike percentage is 56%. His average takedown per fight is three. And guess what? Nobody could take him down. That man is a unit. Now, we're gonna have a lot of fun on this next one here, and we're gonna start with Jimmy. If there's somebody to dethrone this man in the welterweight division, take the title from him. Who do you think it's gonna be? It's the man who inspired the way I am here today. <laughs> Give me Conor McGregor. Give us the fight we want to see. Precision beats power and timing beats speed. That never changed. That left-hand shot is still always lethal. All it takes is potentially one. The, t the mind games he w could potentially play, the crowd being a factor, I think most people would probably be cheering for McGregor. The atmosphere he brings is just such an advantage. Give me my guy, Conor McGregor. Give us what we want to see. I respect it, but if they did fight, respectfully, Conor might get molly wild. <laughs> Andrew. I got to go with, you know, the guy that fought him closest than anybody else has, Colby Covington, man. He's 17-3. and three, is the number one ranked welterweight for a reason, man. You know, last time they fought, he put on a show. A lot of people thought he could have won. I thought, you know, he might have won that fight. You know, of the 10 rounds he's fought, you know, against Usman, he's won at least four of them, maybe even more. You know, winning half of, half of, you know, half of them. You know, he, de he defeated Masvidal in a unanimous decision at UFC 272. You know, I think he's going to get one more fight against Usman, and I think he's going to beat him, man. That last fight between them was close. Yeah, yeah it was. Really close. Yeah. Colby's taking dubs in the ring, maybe not outside of the ring. <laughs> well, we could talk about that all after. Najee, who for, you got? For me, I'm taking Leon Edwards, the 19-3 winner of nine straight. He haven't lost since 2015. I understand that. And I feel like he a better he a better striker than um, Uzma. But my only thing is, if, if Edwards want to get the title, he can't get in the wrestling match with Uzma because Uzma going to clearly win that. So if, if he stays on his feet, he got it. Those two are scheduled to fight soon, so that's going to be very interesting to see yeah, what happens yeah. when they do fight. Justice closes out for the block. I'm sorry, y'all. I believe in the hype. I'm going Hamzat Shemaya. Okay. Bro, Who the heck is that guy? <laughs> Never heard of him. Look, let me explain this. Kamar Usman, you're right, Samori. Kamar Usman is the best fighter in the world. He's the most well-rounded when it comes to grappling, wrestling, uh, striking, everything. Here's the thing, though. Usually, he has a big size advantage against most of his opponents. He doesn't have that here with Hamza Shemaev. And also, with the little fights, that, with the little that we've seen from him, we really don't know his peak. So I think that this is the most dangerous opponent and the biggest threat to his welterweight title. I feel like this, he only peaked already. I feel like you, he's, I, he's I, 10 I, fights I, in. I feel like, if, I feel like if, Uzma, if he faced Uzma in like a in like couple years, Uzma's still going whoop to him, whoop him. I don't know. And he gonna, I don't know about gonna that. It's going to be one-sided. It will be, be one-sided. I don't know. He's a better wrestler than him. Understand that. He a better wrestler. Hamza is a natural 185er. Okay, and Uzma is a better wrestler. If they, if they start do, how do we? How do we know? Guess what? We'll find out on Saturday <laughs> as we Fine cannot enough. wait for this loaded card. Coming up next, we transition. I hope you guys see what I did there. <laughs> we transition from the octagon to the hardwood. Najee and the rest of the crew will tell you their, finally, their final MVP picks of the season only here on WP Sports Desk. <laughs> 